Oh, good stuff. Yeah, some, more, some more eBay stuff. Gas cans. Okay. Look at all these tools. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay. Put brand that. new tools too. What's that? Look at all these brand new tools. Look at this. Um, so okay, so you put What's in that overstuffed priority mail package we got there? Uh, a box from Florida. More to oh mom. I don't think mom's sending you stolen tools. No. Not that I know of anyway. Do you need a uh do you wanna Okay, why not? <laughs> Who do you know in the Stratford Fire Department? I found a, uh, what do you call it, tag sale. Huh. Along with, um, along with something else. What'd you find? Uh-oh. Ammo box. Ammo box? What kind? Oh! Another one of the uh, Korean War ones. And how much did this set you back? Uh, how much do you want for that? $45. No way. You gotta no get me. Way. So we go around in circles, and I said I picked one up in Florida for like less than the freaking, um, you know, so. Ten bucks. Or the other eight dollars, whatever it was. No, I did good. I got I, I got it for $15. That's and, not too bad. And it was, and it was, uh, and so I, so what happened was I, I, yeah, let me get rid of it now. So I walk around. I bought some, I bought like, oh, so I have a gas can, brand new, plastic gas can, and I'm missing the, the scrap board. I probably have one of those somewhere. I found, I found one brand new at the Primo, at, at this tag sale. So I bought a whole bunch of other stuff, and the guy goes, well, make me an offer. $15, $20 here, new, and in this shape. And so finally I bought a bunch of stuff, like some, like, half bottle of Windex. Oh, half. you bundled it. Yeah, so I finally, I, <laughs> and I said, I said fifteen dollars. The guy sorry fifteen. And then I asked him. I says, "Do you have any ammo?" And uh, well, that they're probably not going to have too much of. Yeah. So, but the the seal, of course, is uh, it was uh, what is this? It's a shotgun, two hundred nine primer. Oh, and he had a thing I didn't buy. He had a he had a um, carry that with me. He had a um, shotgun press. I got like three of them. I know, that's why I didn't buy it. <laughs> yeah, what brand was it? Mech? Oh, I don't know. What color was it? Hmm. Probably still there, I don't know. No, I said, I don't, not interested. I was wondering what color was it. Color? Yeah. Black, maybe red or white. Ah. <sighs> Red's gonna be Lee. They're like 40, 45, 50 bucks new. Uh, or it could be an early mech. Those are usually about 15 to 35 dollars used. I mean, they're not that expensive. I, I have a couple of them. I never use them. I use a Lee sometimes, but that's it. You know, it's not really a big deal. I do a lot of shotgun shell reloading. I don't do shot, no, shot shell shooting anyway. Oh, you say you have a garbage for. Um... Uh, oh, and you got a tub. I got a tub. You see the 55 gallon drum? Oh, that. Uh, 275, 50, 500 gallon drum over there. It's all paper, right? Mostly, yeah. No batteries, anything that's exploding like that? No, 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 no. There's food in there, of course. So I'll leave that for the critters. They'll tear it into it tonight. And I will get the door. Oh! Hold on a second here. What do we have here? We have. Oh, look at this. A nice used wrench. Hmm. Wart Power Master. So something tells you this is not going to be a power master after tonight. It'll be something else. Yeah, this is going to be like a, a used craftsman again or something. That's a nice set. Oh, we got craftsman. This is brand new. You already turned that one in, I see. Yeah. Yeah, already. <laughs> All right, we better get up there and eat. Did you crash the bottom of that car? No, the seal fell off. Seal fell off. He hit a parking lot divider. Uh. Oh, I gotta feed the cats. Hold on. Well, go ahead. I'll, I'll get out. Something tells me you guys are hungry. Yeah, figures. Oh. 
Come on. You guys better eat this and not the raccoon. Only two of you is out here, so that's all you get. Ouch. Mike going with us to the restaurant or no? I don't know. I just emailed, I just uh, shot him an email. I've been dying for this cheeseburger all week. <laughs> you were jolting for that cheeseburger while we were walking out of the restaurant last week. I still am. Oh boy. I hear another big bill coming. No. No. <laughs> yeah, so the uh, Guy offered, uh, or was I saying, you know, 45, 50 bucks or something? Yeah. Had some kids in the pit the other day. Oh yeah. yeah it's not Chased them out. They ran like jackrabbits. Yeah, I bundled. That's exactly what I did. First thing I asked him, you have any ammo? <laughs> First thing I said. Were you in New York or Connecticut? Uh, where well, that was? Connecticut. Oh yeah, Connecticut, you may find it. Not so much New York. Yeah, that's how to think about that for me. Yeah, Connecticut, and uh, over there behind, uh, not too far from Newtown actually. I got a nice long Terry video for you tonight. Oh, cool. She says, how come you're filming? I says, because whenever Scott has to look at a rerun of the Terry show, he gets very upset. He doesn't like that. He wants to see your smiling face on his video every week. Why? I said, just to hear your sob stories. Apparently she's getting her unemployment again, believe it or not. $123 a week some tier system or whatever she qualified for and I sleep there. I said, how do you get unemployment when you don't work? You haven't had a, you have like three days worth of work in like the last year probably better feel of it. Jeez. I guess Billy's never going back to work. He's a permanent disability or whatever. Boy. And he qualified for Medicare because uh, his, his uh, disability does not count toward taxable income and she makes nothing. Lives of the Slackers. And how much she enjoys her leisurely lifestyle. You know, getting up, complaining because Billy gets up at 6 o'clock in the morning and she likes to sleep till 9, 9.30. So that's nice. The lives are, you know, fat, lazy, and slow. Yeah. I might not be clocked in somewhere, but I'm working. Hmm. You know, I'm doing things, you know, I, I stay... Uh, Oh, yeah, she asked about that. What does Scott do? He doesn't do anything. I said, okay, tell him that. Okay. He's yeah. painting bathrooms. He's scrubbing yeah. cars. Uh -huh. He's uh -huh. cleaning out people's garages. He's tax. going to tag sales to buy tools that he turns into Sears after service. he's ground off the real names. Running a taxi service. Yeah, I, I, I stay busy. Hauling people to the hairdresser in the cemetery or wherever, you know. Oh, I broke uh, 100000 one hundred thousand and one twenty-five since last week. That's impressive. Where did you go this week? Not that, 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 that really that far though. You know, I keep, uh, I keep. Well, Terry keeps busy too. She goes from the bed to the TV, from the TV to the computer, from the computer to the to the the, the, the toilet or, or the kitchen, and then back to the bed again, and then to the. 
that, that kind of I painted a couple of, I painted two doors. I did, I did a, what do you call, not an inspection, a registration thing. Uh -huh. I said, I don't want no money for this. And she didn't, I said, I said it'll take, take me three seconds to put that on. She can't reach in. I was yeah. like, like little things like that, you know. Uh -huh. So I said, I'll, I'll, uh, I said, give me, give me an unsweet tea and I'll be happy. Yeah. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's my bill. And I said, I'm not charging for that. Did she have an unsweet tea? And she did. Huh. She brewed it. And I said, that's my fee, an unsweet tea. That's all I ask. Why me meat? I said, I'm good. Just this unsweet tea. And, you know, so I said, you know, you scrape it off a little Windex, clean it. It'll take one second. I said, well, I said, I will not charge for that. Yeah, I painted two doors. Oh, I, stra I cleaned out a garage. And then good? Well, no, it was just trash. Oh. Like she had newspapers, oh, you know, like, yeah. yeah, you know, and then um, and it, was, it was like, it was like garbage in there, you know. 200 pickle jars, saved egg crates. Like, like that, you know, like, the, but the, these are like, like Heritage Hills garages, so they're not, you know, mm. not like some from the 1940s and uh, That's why I asked if anything good in there. <laughs> Knowing where <laughs> you were doing it. Waiting for him to go. No, no, nothing in there. She uh, got rid of her car a couple of three years ago, and then, just, then more shit ended up in there. Ah. I sold more shit on eBay. Hmm. I got a Victrola that's going to be going to Turkey. Hmm. Mustafa in Turkey. I've been talking to him over there, and uh, when I talk to him, he doesn't speak English, but he. Must have a translator program on his uh, email or whatever. Yeah. Or sometimes, or sometimes they stand there and say, "What does it say?" And then yeah, that too. But it seems like he is doing it himself. But uh, some, some of it's a little hard to read, but understand rather. But I get most of it because I had uh, he's telling me all about the old stuff he collects. You know, telephones and phonographs. Mm -hmm. He has a little shop over there that's he refurbishes old phonographs and radios for people, tube radios, things like that. He says over there the Turkish government shuts off the freaking airwaves at like six o'clock or something like that, and you can only get a few stations from Russia or you know the Arab countries or something like that. But it turns out he was in the Turkish military, and he worked for an arsenal at uh, Kirkale. What kind of a gun would have you had the? 80 oh, oh, uh, G3, a G3, and a couple machine guns and rockets. Which apparently he was a he was machine gunner, but uh, after that he, he had something to do with it. He was some kind of X-ray technician, and he worked at Turkey's premier arsenal. You know, building rifles, rockets, and other weapons for the Turkish military. They was telling me all about the museum they got there, all the weapons they got in there. <laughs> nice, <laughs> yeah. Have any extras? <laughs> yeah. No, he was telling me that it's actually very hard to get you know personally owned firearms in Turkey. There's plenty of illegal ones, yeah. but there's a lot of risk involved in that because you get caught with it, they'll throw you right in jail. You know, you can get a firearms license, I guess, but it's uh, expensive and time-consuming and difficult. Probably got to be politically connected or something. Who knows? I didn't ask, but... And he was showing me pictures of the museum where they got all these antique... We're like, holy shit. We thought we got some good stuff over here from them. They kept all the good stuff and sent us the shit. You know? Really? Oh, the nice things they had in there. And I cleared up a few misconceptions on nomenclature concerning these Turkish Mausers. You know, they don't they don't call them the same thing over there that we call them over here. They have their own name for them. What do they what do we call them? We call them the pattern 1938. Where this term come from was always suspected to be an American importer. Came up with it. And for the Turks apparently it doesn't mean anything. To them, it's a Mauser with Abdullah something's name on it, you know, for the uh, the Sultan of that time, 1896, you know, and all of that. And they have another name. For, I forget. It's in Turkish. I can't pronounce it. But uh, they don't call it pattern 1930. They don't even know what the hell that means. You know. Now, to them, it doesn't matter when it was made. A Mauser is a Mauser, no matter what style it is. 1893, 96, 98, whatever. So I did learn something. He wants me to hold on to the phonograph for shipping it to the 22nd because he's got to go to Russia. He didn't say what for, but I imagine he's picking up more radio points. How many Turkish Mausers you got? About 10. Different uh, years? Oh, yeah. Mostly. They said, yeah, the government did sell a lot of their old weapons over here back in the 1980s and 90s, and that's why we have them. Ah, what's that? No, that's not a problem. Looking to 
to see who's speeding and uh... <laughs> looking for you, Scott. They are out to get you. So that was interesting. Teddy wants you to buy more shit. In front of me, I, I would have blew the stop sign. Uh huh. Yeah, I really would have got a video. Damn, the guy up there saved me. Yep. Because I would have looked left and not looked right. I just would have. Better invite him to dinner and pick up the tab. Man, you you saved me one hell of a speeding ticket. And I'm hungry too. Uh huh. That excuse wouldn't have held up. Nope. Yeah, he bought my Victrola. Then he had me. He wanted to buy a sound box for it at the reproducer head with a needle nose. I found one of those for him, buying that. One of my spares, and uh, he wants to buy a spare motor that I have for Victrola. So, and you know what? He did not even blink at the $157 shipping charge to get it over there. Huh. How much did you buy all this stuff for? Well, with the sound, but with the extra parts, he's paying around 200 bucks for just the stuff. The machine, which is one of my water damaged ones. The sound, the, the sound box, which is needs rebuilding, but it's in good shape. And the motor, which really has nothing wrong with it. About 200 bucks for that, and he's gonna pay. 150 for shipping. 157, plus however much extra it's gonna be for that 10 pound motor. Hmm. You know, I'm not charging a lot for the motor, but it's cast iron, it weighs 10 pounds. He's gonna have to, you know, that's gonna be a whopper on the shipping. Might even have to ship it in two packages, because I don't, it may tip it over the limit for international shipping by the post office. I have to weigh it up, final, give it a final weigh and see. But I got some time to do that because he's not going to be getting it for a while. Had some guy in Russia, bought a little car, I had somebody else buy hmm, something. More cars. How many cars you got left? Not that many. The ones I'm keeping, of course, probably like seven or eight of them. But uh, for sale, I think there's still four or five up there for sale. And they're going. Well, they're not very quickly, but they do go. They're not, they're not selling dirt cheap. There are some things I am selling dirt cheap, and there's some things I'm not. Danbury Mint cars, I'm not selling dirt cheap. What about Franklin Mint stuff? I never had one of these. I don't know. You know, I had some old Titanic shit, brochures, things like that. Hmm. I put them on there, 50 cents, dollar, five dollars, whatever it was. That's selling. People are buying that shit. Where'd you get those? Shit, who the hell? I don't even remember anymore. That's the thing. A lot of that stuff that's sitting out there in that fucking shed. I've been there 20, 25 years. I don't even remember half this shit. Putting it in there. Never mind where I got it or anything else. It's all basically found money for me at this point. Somebody sends me a note this morning that the carburetor I sent them, one of my old carburetors, arrived with a broken piece. Hmm. I said, well, you're in luck, because that's why I ship priority mail. It is insured. Take a picture of the broken piece, send me the pictures, I will get you covered. That is insured to $50, and I can insure it for more than that if it's more than that. You have to pay extra, that's all. And I make damn sure to insure everything. I insured uh, a train that I had, only one train I ever sent mm -hmm. that back to the factory, and they destroyed the thing. Yeah. Whole new train. Oh okay. yeah, you know they they basically, they basically had to do. They, they, both, they it was insured for was it 200. Yeah, I sent a mirror to somebody in Ohio. I think it was. No, I'm sorry, not Ohio. It was upstate New York, about uh, three three hundred miles maybe upstate, and it uh, was extremely heavily packed. I mean, I triple boxed this damn thing. All kinds of padding. It arrived cracked fucking last. So I said, not to worry. Take send me a couple pictures. He did. I sent them right to the post office insurance and they may go down immediately. This thing was like like fucking to the one when, when it got to the repair. It was UPS actually. I, I, oh I, UPS I, puts their stamp of approval on everything. Yeah, and, and I I sure I said this was like like a two hundred I said this was like I think it was like three like a three like hundred dollar train, two hundred and fifty dollar train engine. Yeah, yeah. And uh they said when they got it, the thing with the guy, they didn't pack it right. They said this thing was the rails were busted, the light was broke, the horn was broke off, Man. hooks were busted. Uh, holy shit! Then it, you know, and I was like, oh my god. They, they, then they had, then they said that then it, the paint was all scratched on it from all the parts jiggling around in there. So basically, they just gave me a whole new um, engine. Yeah. They said here they they because I, I had an 07, they gave me a like a, a 2011. Yeah. Which was just like a slightly different, but you, you couldn't tell the difference if you really sat and looked at it. You always use the damn insurance. Cost a dollar or two sometimes if it's more than what priority. It's the only time I ever about. use the insurance, and that's when I needed it. Well, the flat rate priority will give you fifty dollars automatic. That's you don't have to pay extra for that. Regular priority gives you up to a hundred dollars automatic. You don't pay extra. 
If it's more than 100 bucks, then you pay a percentage. You know, if the item is valued more. But if you buy something on eBay, or if I'm shipping something from eBay, I can only insure it for what it's sold for. Mm. So if it's sold for 300 bucks, that's what I can insure it for, not 350 or 400 or what I think it's worth. You know, it's, I guess I do that to avoid fraud problems, probably. So I found anything about that wrench yet. Well, I did. I found out about, oh, guess I found out about the wrench. 1931, what? 1947. Which wrench was this? The Craftsman wrench. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. It's called uh, Circle H Tools. Yeah, I told you it was dated. It had, it had 9 of 1946 right on it. So that's in the year range. But I can't find I, I can't find a price on eBay. No, it's too obscure, Scott. I lo you know, there are very few people that actually collect tools like that. They, they buy them to use them. And if a tool doesn't have a particular use to anybody, they're not going to you know, knock themselves out uh, trying to buy it. The only kind of tools people really collect are weird antique woodworking tools, things like that. You know, oddball, really oddball or picturesque looking stuff. I got a standing offer from Sears for $35 for a store credit. For what? For that tool. Why, because they could come up with one? Well, they said if they've got a tool and they don't make it no more, they give you a store credit. So you turned it into them? No, not yet. Because uh... I'm finding older ratchets for, uh, they, they had, they, they're selling them on eBay for like 60 to, to 200 bucks. Uh, yeah, but are they selling? They, they're asking that, but are they getting it? I don't know. That will you go to sold listings, oh. hit the sold listings button, and that'll tell you how many have sold. Sometimes you'll find none have. You know, that happens a lot. Or think they have sold, but for significantly less money. Like I put a brand new 1972 Ford Galaxy 500 grill on eBay this morning. I go and look, there's two guys selling the same exact thing. I couldn't believe it. New in a box, everything. One guy wants 275 bucks for it, the other guy wants 439. Yep. And I say, well, fuck both of you. And I put mine for buck fifty, and I'll take a hundred. I don't care. I, I got this for free from a customer. So whatever I get for it is found money 100. percent I have zero invested in this except the eight or nine strips of tape I put across the top of the box. <laughs> you know? Should have sold it for a hundred. Well, I will. What I'll do is I'll put it for a buck fifty the first week. Don't sell. I'll drop it to buck twenty-five. Don't sell. I'll put it to buy it now hundred dollars. So I know that if one does sell an eBay, it's going to be mine. <laughs> Unless those guys also drop this like $90, which I don't think so they're going to do. So that's going to piss those guys off. Well, fuck them. I don't care. You know, I didn't tell them to sell it for that kind of money. I don't know where to get the idea. It's worth that much. It's a 72. It's not like a 1945 or something. Yeah, you know? yeah, I guess. What the hell? Or something, yeah. yeah. You know, I got like a 1932 Ford here. In which case, it's worth about two grand probably. But I like the picture of that falcon in the tree. Yeah. <laughs> Today. He's open. I don't know if he is or not. They always have the open sign, but not necessarily open. They fooled us that way once before. No stops. We're going straight to dinner. Yeah, I know that. I don't uh, fucking stops. <laughs> I don't need anything in particular right now. And if I do, I have enough fucking credit on eBay to buy a hell of a lot more. Than I will really eat. Right now, I got enough to buy a fucking ladder and the, uh, the goddamn cover I need to punch it so much I had to send away for those, those debit cards they offer so I don't want to put that in my bank I don't want any tax fucking trails on that you know <laughs> I think this week the RV has paid off hmm. well by eBay it, it's been paid for by everything I saw basically everything I sold on eBay for the last uh, two and a half months. Oh, look at that. What? A little cab over whatever the hell that is. Interesting. Hmm. Boy, we always get the longest light. It's only because I'm hungry. For cops. Oh, now, now I get the light. <laughs> what do you say? Sunlight's in it. The sunlight's in it. Want me to read it? I got it. 
as the car swerves all over the road. <laughs> Startling you so much. Hey, what's up? Okay. Yes, I can. Okay, I'll uh, uh, I'll put the word out. Yeah, it's got brand new brakes on it, so. I, I paid, uh, I remember what I paid for it, so I, I'm sure I can get at least more than what I paid for it. Okay. Alright, I'll, uh, I'll put it for sale. Alright, sounds like a deal, awesome. Mm -hmm. Alright, thanks. Alright, I'll let you know. Alright, I'll talk to you later. Alright. What are we selling? Once uh, I bought a tractor, and uh, where did you get to? Oh, um, Hannaford's. Huh? Hannaford's. What's at Hannaford's? What kind of tractor is it? Uh, Pollen Pro 600. Oh, okay. And it was a steel. So I pull up, I'm going down Cobb Road, and I see tank sale. Okay, pull right in. And here's this, this beautiful looking tractor. And when I bought the thing, it's not coming from a slum, it's coming from houses off on Cobb Road. How the fuck did you move it? I had to go get the truck. Oh. And what we had to do was, when you drive in the driveway, it's like Mike's parents' driveway. The further you get in, the more of a hill you got. Until you get further and further closer to the driveway, the rock wall goes further and further down until the grass is flat. So we backed up the pickup truck, opened up the gate flat with the rock wall, and we drove it right on. <laughs> so when it, then when I had to get it off, I had to call Mike to get the ramps to get the fucking thing off uh, and drive the thing off. I said, How many horsepower? I do not know. What kind of engine? I, I don't know. But did you buy this? Yeah, I bought this and um... And you don't know what kind of engine, engine was in it when you bought it? Uh, was it was uh, Did you right check the oil? It. Yes, I did. Clean. That must have said what kind of engine it was right on top of it, no? I'm sure it does. I can't remember what I've had with that Vanguard, is. Coleman, Kohler. No clue. I changed... I was changing the oil on it at the beginning of the season, at the end of the season. And that has to be done again, I'm sure. He has contractors that come up there and do his property now. Oh, what uh -huh. is it? Can't see it, or I die. Chevy. Sixty-five. He doesn't do his own lawn. Can't. Why not? Too big. He don't got some little front lawn like Miss Brady. He's got. Uh, uh, well, Mike saw it. It's it's, it's it's a big property. So he uh, he can't handle. He, he I, I said you ain't gonna be able to handle all this. And he had a push mower, so I went and found that. Ah. And I stumbled on it. You know, and I, I seen the thing for 300 and, and you know, it was like in condition. Well, the guy had a Mercedes and a BMW in the driveway, and he was moving. Mm -hmm. So I thought this wasn't like some uh, regular asshole that's going to hold on to this thing for 50 years until it's uh, on its last leg. Now I won 500 for it, because that's what I paid for it back in uh, 1960. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Uh-oh, what's that? Oh, yeah. Saw him. <laughs> I see you. I saw. I saw the, the fender uh -huh. way back there. I'm like, uh -huh. Dodge Charger fender sticking out there. Yeah. Uh huh. And white. <laughs> you know, the bagger alone is like 450 bucks. Got the big plastic bagger uh -huh. on it. Yeah. So I thought. So I thought for you know 300 bucks. I thought that was quite. Yeah, a that deal. was a pretty good deal. I don't know what the motor is. It's a Poland Pro 600. Clean too. It's, it's not all dinged up, you know. It's nice. 
Well, well, I already, well Mike saw it. Mike, I asked Mike about it, and he saw it back back when I bought it. Well, well, I told you about some of the machines they dumped off at us. Hmm? Not a fun, I told you about some of the machines they dumped off at us. Uh -huh. Nothing wrong with the damn things. You know, you're them, they don't care. They don't even try to sell them. Which is fucking crazy as far as I'm concerned, but all right, whatever. You know. He always waits until the worst times to, to sell these things. I said, do, do this in the beginning of the year. It's the same thing with the fucking snowblower. He waits until uh, April or May or June. Oh, I don't want to need it no more. I said, yeah, uh huh. Oh, jeez. Uh huh. So I said, no, no, I am, so I'm not selling this. I said, wait, you wait until November and I'll sell this. I said, no, nobody wants this fucking thing. So I waited until uh, right around Thanksgiving, and I put the fucking thing for sale, and I had ten, ten, phone, ten bytes on it. Mm -hmm. Ten bytes on it. I said, there you go. Where'd you put it for sale? Uh, I put it for sale in the hardware store in uh, New Milford. And I went down there, I said, can I put up a little business card? And the guy said, go ahead. Or a little thing. He said, go right ahead. Hmm. My phone rang for four days, five days straight. Four times a day. The, the four or five times a day, the thing rang. Finally, I said, I got, uh, I said, look, I got a bunch of phone calls. I said, I'm not going to play car salesman. And you buy it, you buy it. I'm not going to hold it for nobody. And you can want me to buy it and take it. That's how I'm selling it. Mm -hmm. I'll get back to you. I said, uh, I said, I'm not holding it. I was laughing like hell this morning. Kenny, who's selling a 65 Chevy, uh, not, I'm sorry, a 60, 76 Corvette on Craigslist. He got one phone call for the car so far from David Berkowitz. I'm surprised we haven't got a few of those on the cars we're selling. I like that Corvette with, uh, oh God, 28,000 miles? Or was that, was that yeah, 20, no, 20, yeah, 28,000 miles. Which one was this? Out in Colorado. Oh, I don't know about that one. I know the one about that guy in, what was it? Uh, oh, shit. Nebraska? That car dealer? Oh, like car dealer guy, miles yeah. out of some shit like that. I like the one in Oklahoma, the battle of uh, permits for the junkyard <laughs> that finally ended in fucking 2011. Yeah, all right. that was dead. It's all cleared up. All the paperwork's done. Everything, all the court cases all been... <sighs> Shit. I wonder what's the rarest car in there. Don't know. They were pretty rough shape, though. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. been through Oklahoma and there's nothing there. It's flat and there's nothing there. Yeah. What the hell's the big fucking deal? Yeah. Not like we're not next to the Putnam Plaza here and it looks like this, this is like ruining the whole fucking town, you know? Mm -hmm. And they wonder why people go crazy and start killing people, you know? They walk into that, uh, somebody tried to do it in Georgia a few weeks ago, I think. And they'll be shot by a cop before he got in the building. Hmm. And he didn't plan very well, I guess. Those two Boston bomber motherfuckers heard that trial got put put on hold. Shit. Well, one Boston bomber motherfucker, I mean. And his little helpers there who tried to clean up his mess. Yeah. You know, not really. I don't know if they realized what he'd done or not. But uh, they're, they're, done, they're done. They're done. Well, I like how they're, when they're in the taxi cab boasting and bragging. Yeah. The night that they're looking for. Well, those were the two bombers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Huh. I'm talking about his, 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 the college, the little kid, the college kids. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. His dorm helpers, buddies yeah. there. Get rid of his laptop and all this shit for him. I don't know if they, if they knew he was the fucking bomber doing that. I would horse whip them, then put him on trial. But even if they didn't, they're still fucked. You helped the terrorists. What the fuck is the matter with you? You now you forget about going to college. You're felons. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, you're going to go to prison where you're going to explore the joys of anal sex for the next 25, 30 years. Enjoy, motherfuckers. Nice petite young white boys like you're going to really like it in there. You want to help terrorists? That's what happens. And what about the mother there? Who uh, you have no right hunting my children down? Well, I expect that from a mother. You know, <laughs> I would expect no less. Every damn mother's gonna say something like that. The kid is fucking Charlie Manson. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just my guess for update where we were at. Oh. Uh, oh, he's there already. Well, he said, he said, where'd you get to? I said, uh, Hannaford, so we're just passing. Oh. Uh, so I guess he wanted to gauge where we're at. Let's see what he said a little further away from the music this time. Mike didn't like that last time. What? Too close to the music. Oh, yeah. 
Well, I was going to say, after a few minutes, you know, I'll need to turn that down in the amp. Was, that was just way too loud. Yeah. Getting rid of the evidence from Mike sees you? No, the sun just went down. Uh-huh. Don't look like it went down. He's gonna see the video anyway. Then you won't be there at the time to have your balls busted about it, so I'll do it later. I was reading the menu to the old man earlier. Oh my God, you guys are crazy. That much money? What are you, nuts? Oh, oh my God. It was worth it. Well, there's... Well, yeah, you, it was good food. Well, you left a tip. Yeah. But then I had a, you know, that was... Uh, but then I did order... We did order a lot, though. Oh, was, yeah. <laughs> I don't think the bill is going to be nowhere near that. We're not even going to break 100 today. Well, we'll see. No, I don't think so. Not for three cheeseburgers, I don't think. We got a salad, too. Salad, yeah, but we're still not going to break 100. And you're going to watch your table brewed tea again? Yes. Oh, for fuck's sake. I don't see Mikey.